We're asked to solve cotangent x equals negative square root 3 divided by 3 for all solutions, give exact radian answers, use k to represent any integer. We will solve this equation using reference triangles and then verify the solution using the unit circle as well as graphically. The first thing to notice here is that the cotangent function value is negative on the coordinate plane cotangent theta is equal to x divided by y. If x divided by y is negative, either x is positive and y is negative, or x is negative and y is positive, which means these solutions will be in the second quadrant, where x is negative and y is positive, or the fourth quadrant, where x is positive and y is negative. The next step is to determine the reference angle. However, it's going to be challenging if we leave the cotangent function value as negative square root three divided by three. Sometimes it's helpful to rationalize the numerator, which I've done here below. Notice how negative square root three divided by three is equal to negative one divided by square root three. So we'll use the cotangent function value in this form to determine the reference angle. In determining the reference angle, we ignore the sign and determine the angle that has a cotangent function value of one divided by square root three. If we sketch this reference angle in the second and fourth quadrants, the cotangent function value will be negative. So having a cotangent function value of one divided by square root three should remind us of a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle where cotangent theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the opposite side. Notice cotangent pi over three is equal to one divided by square root three, which means we sketch a reference angle of pi over three radians in the second and fourth quadrants. And let's also sketch the reference triangles. Notice in the second quadrant, the adjacent side is negative one, the hypotenuse is two, the opposite leg is square root three. In the fourth quadrant, the adjacent leg is one, the hypotenuse is two, and the opposite leg is negative square root three. Notice for both reference triangles, the ratio of the adjacent side to the opposite side is negative one divided by square root three, which is equivalent to negative square root three divided by three. And now let's work on determining all of the solutions. Let's first focus on the least positive angle in the second quadrant, which would be this angle here. This angle is equal to pi radians minus pi over three radians. Common denominator is three. Three thirds pi minus one third pi is two thirds pi. So let's go ahead and write down x equals two thirds pi. But we're looking for all the solutions, which means we need an expression for all the angles that are coterminal to two thirds pi radians. Which means we need to add multiples of two pi radians to two thirds pi radians, which gives us plus two pi k, where k is any integer. And now let's focus on the least positive angle in the fourth quadrant, which is this angle here. Notice this angle is two pi radians minus pi over three radians. Which is equivalent to six thirds pi minus one third pi, which is five thirds pi. So we also have x equals five thirds pi. And then for all the coterminal angles, we have plus two pi k. So while these two expressions do give all these solutions to the equation, we can actually write a much simpler expression by recognizing that the period of the cotangent function is pi radians, we're looking at the coordinate plane, because these terminal sides point in the opposite direction. If we start with two thirds pi radians and then add pi radians, we would get this angle here in the fourth quadrant of five thirds pi radians. And let's go ahead and just verify that. If we start with two thirds pi and then add pi, Common denominator is three. Notice how we do get five thirds pi radians. So again, because the period of the cotangent function is pi radians, or because the terminal sides of these angles point in the opposite direction, we can simplify the expression for the solutions as x equals, let's start with the angle of two thirds pi, and then add just multiples of pi radians by adding plus pi times k. Let's go ahead and use the simplified expression for our final solution. Let's verify the solution on the unit circle. It's a little more challenging to determine cotangent function values on the unit circle because cotangent theta is equal to x divided by y. 
But if we take a look at the points on the inner circle, except for the points on the axes, notice all the denominators of the ordered pairs are two, which means to find x divided by y, we can just focus on the numerators. For example, notice at 2 thirds pi radians, looking at just the numerators, x divided by y is one divided by square root of three, which we know is equivalent to negative square root of three divided by three. Similarly, at 5 thirds pi, looking at just the numerators, x divided by y is one divided by negative square root of three, which is equivalent to negative square root of three divided by three. But again, we don't need two expressions to determine all the angles that are coterminal to two thirds pi radians and five thirds pi radians because, because the period of the cotangent function is pi radians or because the terminal sides point in the opposite direction. We can use the simplified expression of x equals two thirds pi plus pi k radians. And now let's verify some solutions graphically. In red we have the graph of y equals cotangent x. In blue we have the graph of y equals negative square root of three divided by three. The points of intersection represent these solutions. So the first angle we found was two thirds pi radians represented by this point of intersection here. And if we add pi radians, we get the next solution of five thirds pi radians, which we found in the fourth quadrant. If we add pi radians again, we get eight thirds pi radians and so on. If we go back to two thirds pi radians and subtract pi radians, we can find negative solutions. Negative pi over three, negative four thirds pi, and so on are also solutions. So this graph does verify our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.